Hello and welcome everyone to the second virtual conference uh, by Entrepreneur India, powered by businessx.com. Today's discussion will revolve around impact of SMEs and small businesses midst and aftermath of COVID-19. I am Punita Sabhaval Kapoor, Deputy Editor of Entrepreneur India, your host for the session. Today, amid these unprecedented times owing to the novel coronavirus, we are going to try and find answers to some of the questions that may have cropped up in the business community. Let me start by laying out the ground rules for your attendees. The discussion will go on for around 30 minutes. This will be followed by a Q&A session for next 20 minutes. If you have any questions during the course of the discussion, you can post them through the Q&A option at the bottom of your screen. Mention in your question whom it is directed to, mentioning the specific panelist. We'll take up the questions post the panel discussion. We would also like to request the attendees to keep the question within the scope of the discussion here today. Let me now introduce our session moderator for today, Ms. Ritu Maria, the Editor-in-Chief of Entrepreneur India and Asia Pacific. Our panelists today are Mr. Ajay Chakur, Head BSC SME, Mr. Arun Mayra, Management Consultant, former member of the Planning Commission and former Chairman of Boston Consulting Group, Mr. Abhishek Singh, Chief Analytics Officer, Lending Card, Deepak Bagla, CEO, Invest India, and Mr. Saikat Roy, Director, Care Ratings. I would now request Ms. Maria to start the session. Over to you, Ms. Maria. Uh, thank you very much, Panita, and uh, thank you to all the panelists. Uh, we have a great panel here today, uh, which is covering a broad spectrum of businesses to the government to an economist like Mr. Maira, who's joined us here today. So thank you very much for being part of this discussion. Indeed, it's very critical that once the lockdown is over, and I write down now that we are in the midst of it, uh, what is going to be the way forward for small businesses and SMEs is really something that everybody is thinking about. Um, there was a survey which was recently done by Economic Times and wherein it was held that about in the confidence survey, which said that only about 3% of small and medium businesses were confident about how they were going to be able to run their business post the lockdown. So we really have a serious problem as far as SMBs are concerned because obviously for them cash is king and now that the business has been under lockdown for more than 25 days, um, how are they going to get out of the situation and really be able to run their business even if not as usual, at least how to is really something that is very critical right now for them to address. And secondly, you know, when, since there was already a, a bit of economic slowdown the country was going through and on top of this uh, uh, natural disaster like this, uh, how is it we are going to control the situation and bring things back as soon as possible? I mean, we we'll even have to define what as soon as possible is looking to be right from here when we are talking today. So let me get down to my uh, great panel out here today to really tell us about uh, what are their thoughts and how are they looking at the picture today. So let me start with the government. Mr. Deepak Bagla is here from Invest in India. Mr. Bagna, thank you for joining us today. I know you're very busy, but still you made time to come and address the SMBs out here. Um, what is it that you see? We are, of course, right now, we're in the midst of it. Right now, from where we are seeing things, things are looking as if, you know, we might still uh, not be able to control it if a lockdown was to be opened by 15th. So how is the government going to be well prepared in order to help the SMEs and currently helping the SMEs in lockdown, particularly when it comes to essential goods and items? Thank you, and thank you for organizing this. And may I say a quick hello to all the panelists. Mr. Maria is there. It's always a pleasure, sir, to meet you, or even though we're doing an e-meeting today. Uh, I think a lot of focus within the government is, and you know they've created these task forces, which are looking at all elements of the current scenario and all elements on how quickly we can restart the business, the moment of life of after the lockdown. Let me tell you what is happening within Invest India. I've got two primary focuses of now. The first is obviously to look at whatever situational issues, emergency issues are coming up in execution of essential supplies as we speak, be it businesses to keep them open for essential supplies and helping them with their entire supply chain and movement. So a large part of the team is focused on that. The other part of the team now today is focusing on life after COVID. And that is what we are trying to see, how fast can we get the economy back? And that is where we've got instructions from the highest offices of the country, that that is what the focus ought to be. And within that, one of the highest focus areas are MSMEs. They're our backbone. It's, it's a no-brainer. 
And at the same point of time, we also believe that that is the entity and that is the entire segment which we need to bring back as quick and as possible, as fast as we can. So essentially what we are doing now, a large part which meet into the essential supplies definitions, be it into food production or food processing, be it medical essential supplies, be it other supplies, and a significant number of MSMEs and their clusters fit into that segment. We are working with them on their business continuum. We have a SIDB coming up very, very proactively. They've come up with some schemes to provide working capital to a large part of these entire segments. Now what we are also looking at is that the post-COVID scenario, how fast do we basically get the labor movement moving back? How do we join the dots so that supply chains start coming back in? How do we create that liquidity which is essential for this entire MSME community to take charge? So I leave myself there for the moment. In fact, I'm here more to hear from everyone and take notes today than be trying to give you answers. Uh -huh. Thank you, Mr. Bagla. Uh, let me come to you, um, Arunta. Uh, you know, probably as an economist and as a part of the Planning Commission and PCG, you have seen a lot of cycles which have been up and down. It's never for an economy, it's never a straight line because uh, that is not the way it works. But this one, of course, is very unprecedented in its scale. I mean, in my lifetime, I have not seen a 21-day lockdown like this ever happening, and we still don't know whether it's going to be further extended. So, you know, in your in your point of view, what do you think small and medium businesses should do in order for having their readiness to be able to bounce back? You know, what, what is it that as measures you think they should be taking in order to, and I mean, you know, you've, you've been always been a proponent of Make in India. And, uh, you know, do you think particularly for export businesses, which may not find themselves coming back or manufacturing businesses not finding themselves coming back for, exporting to other countries do you think amazing things uh, as they are looking to be happening thank you very much ritu i am uh, uh, so um, um, i'm pleased from my heart to be in this panel um, i grew up i'm not an economist let me clarify that <laughs> okay. i'm not but i understand the subject from the perspective of an msme i think much better than an economist might and why after the partition, when I was very young, my father was given a compensation. He, we were in Lahore. He had a big industry there, but he was given a compensation of land in India, in Modinagar, not too far from here, to start a small enterprise. And it was quite a struggle. And I was going through school and then college and uh, with him and observing what it took to create a small enterprise um, with no, no resources and lots of constraints around yourself. Then I, my career went on and I was uh, the director in charge of Tata Motors, which is Tata Motors now Telco then, in Pune, where we created an Indian enterprise to make in India, design in India, trucks and buses, and then later cars and exported them and have been exporting all over the world. Our backbone was only just one lathe or later one CNC machine. And these persons, what they learned and what they did enabled our enterprise to grow, to make in India and to make India proud of what Indians could do. So I have an understanding in my bones, as it were, about what a country where things don't always work your way. When I joined the Planning Commission, um, my portfolio included ministries, and my first love was for the MSME sector. And I told the secretary of the MSME sector when he came to see me, I said, you got the most important job in this country. You're going to build this country. He was shocked. He said, but my budget is so much smaller, he said, as an MSME ministry than the budgets of, you know, so many other ministries. I said, the budget is not the point. So let's work on what is going to be done and should be done collaboratively with the small industries by the government to ensure that this backbone that is at the moment then look too weak to support a big program of industry in India will be the backbone, a strong one for us. And I learned a few things then, and I wanted to share those uh, things. Well, this is a tough time. And the question now would be, please don't give us a lecture about you know, what we should have done all these years, the government as well as industry themselves, small industries, 
what do we do now? And I'm going to say is that we've got to be prepared, like you're pointing out, Ritu and Deepak has, that this is, will pass. We will, we surely will deal with this crisis, but we want to come out on the other side, ensuring that we'll never be in this position again, that never again should our small industries have to suffer as badly as they're doing when this crisis stuck. Only 3% have confidence that they're going to come out of this crisis. That's awful. So what is it that we need to do to strengthen our MSME sector? And I learned these things and I've, uh, I've been sharing them that there's something that the MSMEs could do themselves. And let me say what those are. And those things that they did would help the government around it to support the MSMEs much more effectively. We found, I found, that the MSMEs don't help each other very much. Collectively, in their clusters, in their associations, they are not creating the ability of the many small to collectively become something larger, not as an economic entity, but as a movement, as a voice to be able to get their needs addressed in the proper way. What they need, they should get. This whole problem that we say for banks also, the last mile is the problem. To reach small MSME is too costly. It takes a lot. Whereas to sell, give a loan to a large enterprise is so easy. You know, one meeting and the accounts are very clear. So if the MSMEs could help to reduce the difficulties of others reaching that last mile, which is through forming larger associations in which they manage a lot of the infrastructure and uh, discussions amongst themselves about what they need from the larger system, they would be in a much stronger position as we go forward. And even now in this uh, tough times, if they were more collectively organizing amongst themselves to take best advantage of the help that is available or finding resources amongst themselves for things which are not easily available from the environment, they'll come out much stronger on the other side. We rated around the world the quality of clusters in Japan, in Taiwan, in Germany, uh, and even in parts of the United States, Italy. What we found was that the quality of clusters in India, of small enterprise clusters in India, was the weakest. Whereas we, because we have so many small enterprises and because we need them to grow, need to have the strongest clusters. To focus, therefore, right now, the clusters that mean enterprises themselves, as well as government in its policies, to support and, and train our small enterprises to grow their strength as clusters. And in that, they will learn to be and become much larger small enterprises than they are today. I was very pleased to see recently several small enterprises who were in that crowd in Pimpri Chinchwad, as I said, one lake, one CNC machine. I mean, today, those people are producing in the United States because they built the technology and the strengths, and that is so. So making in India for India teaches you first what you need to learn and do, and then you become quite world-class and the globe can be your market thereafter. Thanks. Sure. Uh, so absolutely, uh, SMEs helping SMEs is probably going to be one way forward. Uh, but I mean, while you've said that we need more clustering, but do you think they could also help each other in terms of the resources that they have with each other? Uh, I mean, for absolutely, example, somebody Ritu. may have a back end. Yeah. Absolutely, Ritu. In fact, the essence of the cluster is not to be a political organization. The essence of the cluster is solidarity to share resources. See, the government provides a tool room for example into a cluster. There are clusters here, outside here, not too far in Farida Badu for years. The members have pooled their own monies. They do get some supplementary assistance from government. They have created two rooms owned by yeah. the enterprises. They have created training facilities which are owned and run by the enterprises. So collectively, they're able to do world-class support of tools, world-class training, and thus build their own capabilities. So rather than the government doing it for them, if they do it together, they are able to share resources, like even affluent treatment. You know, it's a problem for SMEs. They cost a lot. But if they collectively have an affluent treatment plant run by the cluster, they can do that too. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. Thanks, Mr. Mayra. We'll come back to you once again. Let me go to Mr. Ajay Thakur. Now, Mr. Thakur, uh, uh, you've, you've done such a great work in terms of helping SMEs to list themselves when they were young and probably look at becoming large businesses for public money. But today, you know, when, uh, when we're going through this uh, downturn, uh, investor confidence is not looking very great when it comes to small cap and mid cap indices or small cap uh, investments. 
and they may not have the wherewithal right now to hold on to such investments uh, or uh, the SME shares or uh, equities that they may do may want for them to do. And valuations themselves may take a uh, down beating at this point of time. So how are you looking or what will be your advice to your portfolio companies in the SME exchange at this point of time? And how do you think they can get out of faster? And even for ones that were looking to put themselves out there on the stock exchange, what would be your advice to them? Mr. Thakur, you'll need to unmute, please. Uh, uh, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, thank you, Ritu, for inviting me as a panelist. Uh, in fact, uh, if you see last one and a half years, we have seen a lot of beating of small and mid-cap companies as well as, as the companies which were listed on the SME platform. And that is on the background of, uh, you know, uh, our GDP growth falling to the lowest in last 10 years, that is around 4.5%. We have seen the NPS going up. So, of course, equity being a risky instrument, we have seen uh, investors signed away from uh, SME companies, not only on the SME platform, but also onto the large corporates or that are listed onto the main board companies. After this uh, break, uh, corona, uh, this uh, pandemic that break, uh, by 40%, 45%, like this. So everywhere there is a panic situation, there is a pessimism in the minds of the uh, investors uh, and we have seen 1.1 lakh crore rupees uh, going out of India, especially in the month of March itself. So of course, uh, as of now, the confidence level is very low, the trust factor is lacking everywhere. And the second major problem that we have seen till now is that uh, most of the support is in the form of uh, debt. Uh, you talk about that bank funding or you talk about uh, Sidby funding. So most of these funds are coming in the form of debt. I don't know how it is going to work. Of course, interest rate is going to get reduced a lot. But the most important thing that here we need to see is that whether the demand and supply is going to resume after three months with the same uh, level which was uh, happening before this uh, pandemic uh, uh, has started. So it will be a slow process. At least I think it will take one year or so for everything to get as good. And it will not be a, such an early process. And especially, you know, most of the vulnerable sectors, there we will see the investors very much sighing away. Especially in the financial sure. sectors, we have seen the bank, we have seen the bank prices, banks' prices dropping like anything. We have seen NBFC's wealth getting reduced like anything. So there the trust level is very low and most of these are uh, debt finances. So I think one very much uh, important suggestion for us will be that at least some of the debt funds, unless until 20 to 25% of the loans that they have given to this company, unless until they get it converted into equity, I, I don't think the pressure is going to come down because the, the loan amount is the same. Only thing what has happened is that three month moratorium has been given. Now, after that, what is the principal or interest is going to get reduced? Of course not. Is the business will be as usual? Of course not. I think it is going to extend for long. SMEs severe hit out of this, but at the same time, you know, most of the commentators are very much pessimistic on the market. I am a little bit optimistic. The reason being is that uh, we will see a lot of innovations in almost all sectors where the cost of production is going to come down. The demand and supply will keep on moving up. You know, most of the, I have seen the people talking about that we will henceforth, we will more concentrate on buying made in India goods. So I think that this is going to uh, help a lot of promoters. But of course, the requirement is equity funds. You know, debt funds, if we keep on talking about debt funds, I think it is going to create more problems. In my lifetime, uh, I have met 29,000 promoters. And what I have found is that most of the promoters have died because of over leveraging of their balance sheet because of debt funds. So government sure. should come out with some policy or, you know, uh, empowered should be like institution, whereby, you know, uh, they should think of 
providing uh, you know uh, also equity funds to this company as far as valuation is concerned most of the companies have got very low valuation okay we require more and more venture funds fee funds uh, engine investors to look with these smes where they feel that yes uh, the scalability is quite high and they should handhold the companies i think some of the panelists are there who can handhold it and uh, take it to the next level that is very much required though we say that smes are the backbone of the uh, economy but of course finance is the most important thing and at this juncture i think finance is very much required uh, already everything has talked about the term loan etc uh, there is no mention of working capital extension i think a working capital also is very much required at this center and we should have something okay in uh, whatever form and at the same time uh, as far as uh, moratorium is concerned most of the banks have extended uh, to 3 months but i think one more thing is required is that that uh, you know rbi has already reduced the crr and the repo rate okay now the banks have to pass on this interest rate reduction to their sme and in fact the state government should also think of giving subvention of 2 to 3% to the sme so that the sme can move forward i think it's a very tough time but of course uh, as far as india is concerned we are not so severely hit temperatures are going high and i have been told and most of the people are saying that if the temperature crosses 35 to 40 degrees in most of parts of this country i think this uh, this problem will uh, come down substantially and things will be normal as such so of course uh, going forward well, we will require more and more investors to come and uh, look into the smes and they start investing as far as listing is sure. concerned as far as listing is concerned yes of course uh, we will keep on telling to the promoters about the benefits of listing but this whole eco cycle needs to get created there is a demand the supply needs to come and supply has to come both from the government side and from the angel pe vc community sure thanks mr sir um, indeed yeah you're right uh, mr bagla just to add to the point that he mentioned about uh, siddhi coming in and uh, sort of looking to change around the uh, from debt to equity do you think that is possible that is something that the government is contemplating or at from a banking level sorry i'm just trying to get my mute off uh, you know all these are very important ideas and i think we will keep feeding them back into the system how to look at it how to get the balance sheets back in order they are clearly there the point that over leveraging will always create huge issues going forward i completely agree with that i firmly believe that in the next 24 months the fastest growing segment for us will be msmes i believe in that and i'll tell you why one of the things which mentioned mr mayra mentioned also very importantly there's going to be a huge shift in the global supply chain that's one supply chains will typically tend to move closer to where the market is and in that case india is where the market is to a large extent there will be certain sectors in which we will be able very quickly to increase our global market share there'll be new supply chains which will be created and msmes will be the heart of that entire supply chain part and the most important strength of the indian msmes is their nimbleness and their ability to innovate i'm seeing that even today we are getting ventilators made from entities which had msme entities which have the solutions which never ventured into that they were just forging companies you have small sure. towel now coming out making mass sorry i'm taking so much time but the innovation and the nimbleness of the msme in india is where its biggest strength is those two elements with the support of the market the government what are the recipes going forward i'll just be quiet i've taken those points down Sure. Thank you, Mr. Bagla. Uh, let me come to you, Mr. Abhishek Singh. Uh, now, since you know we have three panelists who have mentioned the need for the cash uh, to meet the cash crunch. I mean, you know, now I the way I see it is that the the runway for different companies is going to be very different for small in within the SMB space. Now, there are going to be some SMBs which are going to be able to meet the long gestation, which is like somewhere between six to twelve months. It could be hospitality. It could be you know ancillary of export companies or so many others which would need a runway of at least about maybe 8 to 10 months minimum to come back to be able to 
be where they are. And then they're going to be the, some mid-runway companies, like let's say even retail or uh, restaurants, hospitality. They would need at least a six months events, I would feel. I mean, we are a media company, we understand that. They have at least a six month window from here to go forward. And then there are small runway companies, you know, which could probably bounce back within three months. Now, they would all need different contingency plans, different financial needs would be there, their working capital needs would be there. So at Lending Card, are you planning to do some products or are you planning to launch some kind of working capital uh, financial models which would help these companies to be able to come back? Um, at a very good speed. I mean, and this could be probably be in collaboration with banks, it could be in collaboration with some other financial institutions. Is this something you're working on currently? Yeah, thanks, Ritu. Uh, and I see that a lot of homework has been done with respect to, you know, how different industries are going to behave in the short term, medium term and long term. And obviously there are certain parts of the businesses which are not as highly impacted right now because they are part of essential services. Right? So whether it be grocery, whether it be pharma, whether it be medicine, those industries are not really feeling the pinch as of now, but obviously over a macroeconomic scenario, there is some bit of demand uh, that, that gets constrained there. Then there are industries like you know consumer durables uh, and automobiles, which typically are right now in a leaner period, but you know, towards the festival, towards Diwali, Dashara is when they really pick up, right? So it kind of coincides with the lockdown. So they will have some impact, but I think by the time uh, you know uh, the festivals come through, these industries will start picking up. And then there are the slightly longer term impacts with respect to hospitality, travel, gems and jewelries. I think these are industries which will take a bit, little bit of a more hit and will you know need some time. I think from a lending card perspective, we have always managed to find the right credit worthiness evaluation parameters for SMEs, and that's what we've been doing always. The situation is evolving a little bit because you know different industries are behaving differently, states, geography-wise, cuts are behaving differently depending on the COVID spreads. What we are actively looking at is, um, you know, a how do I continue to fund basis my regular set of products? And there, obviously, as Ajay mentioned, you know, the repo rates going down and the CRR is going down that is going to allow me to you know, look at a slightly more affordable rate of interest uh, in the immediate term, which then will get passed on to the borrowers. I think the other thing that we are actively looking at is, uh, can I create some short-term working capital products to ensure that as industries you know, try to come out of this particular curve, uh, can I give them six to 12 months of loans to ensure that you know, they, they get the right amount of funding to tide over the business difficulties that they're facing now? And uh, then, you know, as they recover, can I then start looking at the longer term relationships? So there are multiple pieces we are working on, but I think it also depends on, you know, how long the lockdown is going to persist and uh, how these various industries are shaping up with respect to the time duration that they take to come back on their feet. So multiple things going on with the banks also, we have co-lending partnerships with multiple banks where we are again actively looking at, you know, how we can pass on the cost of funds lowering that will happen to the uh, borrowers and ensure that uh, the liquidity in the system gets established. Sure. Uh, thanks very much for that, Mr. Singh. Let me come to Mr. Uh, Tulka Troy. Uh, Mr. Roy, what, what, is, what according to you is going to be the rating procedure for SMEs as you go forward? You know, obviously they're not going to be able to meet their uh, projections. They're not going to be able to meet even their uh, EMIs that they may have with banks. Now, how is, this, how is it that you're going to sort of change the entire way that you are looking at SMEs in the next, let's say, quarter? Good afternoon, everybody. Very happy to be here. Uh, as of now, there is no regulations either from SEBI or RBI. Apart from the three-month moratorium is there. So once the three-month moratorium is over, you have to pay your capitalized interest which will mean interest on interest, so actually it will balloon. Post that, we go back to one day of one rupee default. That's how the regulation stands. There is no such regulation. So from our perspective, we'll be doing two things. Uh, not only SMEs, all corporates, we will be looking at the immediate cash flow, and we will have to look at how the projections are hit, because clearly most of the corporates have to be uh, uh, bucketed into uh, two categories, discretionary and those who fall under essential commodities. 
India thankfully is a inward looking economy. So our domestic consumption is a major driver. Within that, we are a services led growth. Over the last few years, the, the main growth engine was a services led growth. And there, the economy, uh, really the, where the MSMEs uh, show their metal. The one of the major things that we will have to keep in mind is MSMEs employ close to 12 crore uh, people. Most of them are non-contractual. Now, if those employment, if that piece of 12 crore employment is hit, it will change the consumption pattern. And that in turn will hurt the other economies. So as of now, rating remains the same. Post the three month moratorium, it has to be one rupee, one uh, day deferred. Even the companies who will be able to manage that piece, they will be encountered with the separate problem as to what happens to their business model per se, the, the, the continuity of their business. So that's a very, very critical area. It's still evolving. We will have to look. Post GST and DEMON, we saw that discretionary spend, we saw a deferred purchase. So it caught up after some time. And uh, for some events like for holidays or vacation or for aviation or for entertainment, movies, IPL, these are lost costs. That's loss. That's clearly revenue loss. There is you cannot have a, a deferred purchase of those things. But for other items, probably they could have a, a deferred purchase. It all depends on the quantum of lockdown that we are looking at. Uh, we did a poll, and uh, it, the results were like that. If the lockdown is about four weeks, then probably 20, 25 uh, percent SMEs could look at a potential closure. The impact severity will increase manifold if it becomes uh, eight week closure. Sure. Um, well, one hopes it doesn't come to that. Uh, but you know, uh, since you mentioned that uh, uh, the the whole one rupee thing that it will happen. Now, honestly, the economy revival will really start post three months. I mean, these three months anyway, they're going. I'm presuming that you are not audible clearly. Uh, you know, uh, can you hear me? Not clear. So, uh, Mr. Bagla, my question is to you that just in case. Some problem in the audio. We can't hear you at all. Hello? Can't hear you. The audio is a huge problem. No, none of us are able to hear you. Ritu, none of us are able to hear you. I think we are unable to hear Ritu. In the meantime, uh, can we take up some questions? Uh, before anybody starts, hi, I'm Deepak Bagla. Can I have a question? Sure. Would it have done for us that how many would want it to be extended, the lockdown, and how many would want to open up just after this? Is that possible? For you to get a vote on that? Uh, you want to ask this? Uh, a live poll, you mean? Of the poll which you are doing, right, as we speak. How okay, many sure. We can check internally if that's possible. 
and how many would be in favor of opening up just after sure. this lockdown? Sure. So in the meantime, uh, Abhishek, we had a question for you uh, from the audience. Uh, they were asking that, uh, would you trust a gym or fitness hub as uh, it was the first industry which was affected by uh, the pandemic? So what is your take on that? Um, look, what will end up happening is uh, even after the lockdown, I think uh, social distancing is something that people will continue to exercise and therefore, uh, as we discussed, there are certain industries which will continue to be impacted for a slightly longer term. Uh, gym and fitness, let's see how quickly it is able to bounce back and how quickly we realize that, you know, the infections have stopped spreading. I think it will depend on that, right? And because as a lender, I need to make a risk proven call. I need to ensure that I'm finally funding uh, a particular industry or a particular customer who would be able to pay back the EMIs, right? And typically there's a moratorium right now, uh, but we'll have to see whether there are any further inputs from RBI which continue to come. But I think it will depend on which industries bounce back. I will not call out a gym or a fitness uh, industry straight away separately, but there are industries which will take time to bounce back. Okay, okay, sure. Mr. Koy, Myra, a specific question uh, one of the audience person has asked that uh, how can they be a part of a, a cluster body and uh, who would encourage such activities in their area? Uh, Mr. Myra, can you hear us? Yes, I'm sorry, my mic was muted. I was trying to answer that question in writing. It's a very important question. Um, the foundation of MSME clusters is one organization that has been concentrating on helping MSMEs to form effective clusters. It also works, the foundation of MSME clusters with the Ministry of MSME. Uh, and the Ministry of MSME has, has developed and is rolling out a pretty large program which is focused on building what I would say is the soft infrastructure of clusters, which is uh, their ability to work together with each other and to be able to then work with larger uh, stakeholders outside like the banks and like the government. So the foundation for MSME clusters is one point I could mention right now. As I said, I do know that the MSME ministry itself is, uh, has been for the last few months preparing and then beginning to roll out programs which are focused very much on uh, clusters and their formation. The third is a, a foreign organization which is working in India for a long time, the GIZ the German organization, and they've had a program for many years to assist uh, uh, clusters uh, formation through associations of MSMEs, like PISME, the foundation for MSME um, uh, enterprises. So there are many, many people who have for quite a while being clear that this is what MSMEs would benefit most from to solidify their own strengths and for the future. So I mentioned a few already. I can talk later in case people want to know more. Thank you. Okay, sure. So, Mr. Bagla, we have one of the audience questions for you, uh, saying that uh, there is a definition for companies mentioning as non-essential when they don't produce food or medicines, but uh, when they cannot work, it is soon clear that they are essential in the sense that they provide salaries and job opportunities, otherwise un unavailable. So, the person would like to sh uh, have your view on that. I personally agree that it is important for everyone to function and the ability to be their workers. But in times like this, as I said, we are in unusual times. And the idea is to try and see how much we can save lives. And the critical element of that was just to restrain mobility as much as possible. So keeping that in mind and keeping just the basic necessity going on, I think this is just a period of a few weeks. And that is where those essential items list has come in from. Where the government is concerned. Okay, sure. 
So Abhishek, one more question for you from the audience. So what's your view on supply chain finance for short term on a clearly basis of BS and a receivable as a collateral? Um, look, that is a part of what we do, but we most of our business is really into working capital. Supply chain is something that we actively look at and uh, depending again on the industry and what kind of supply chain we are looking at, we take proactive calls on that. Uh, the, I mean, the RBI is looking at freeing up more capital to inject liquidity. So I think uh, depending on the right risk frameworks, we'll be able to take a call on that. Uh, again, I don't have a specific answer for that. We'll have to evaluate on a case by case basis and then accordingly take a call. Okay, okay, sure. One more question we'll take up from the audience. Uh, Mr. Bhavin has mentioned that for manufacturing units, orders play a central role, which has been low for past two, three months. Retail slump has also delayed the payment for small and medium sized companies. So, in the current scenario of non funded companies, by the banks, VC or PE, how does one manage the cash flow or paying one's vendors in lieu of the current lockdown? Second, would you want to take this up? The order book is a very, very important component of it. Yeah. Like I said, you have to differentiate between discretionary spending and essential commodity. A large volume of MSMEs is in the services sector. So those associated with the services sector, say for aviation, you have the, 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 the crew, staff traveling. So there is a full paraphernalia of people who are associated with movement of that crew. The entertainment industry, you go to a mall, you go to a, there's a whole sort of the cleaning services, the offices, these will come with a deferred acquisition. The purchase will happen deferred, okay? Uh, garment sector, that will come in a deferred sector. The people who are exporting, uh, in the Middle East, the export generally uh, peak pre-Ramzan in the April to May, June, uh, in, in, in that period because they are also closed for quite a substantial. Effect. So this was the April, May was the time when a bulk of those exports happening, the stuffing happened. If it, after 21 days, so the, all depends on the timing. If after 21 days, the lockdown is actually lifted, even in a phased manner in some of the locations, we could see a sort of flowing back of the loss which has happened. But the essential commodities, FMCG, for example, people who are associated with uh, the manufacture or with the supply chain of the empire FMCG, we are seeing a higher uh, business for them in the present period because people are clearly stocking. So order book is a very important component. The more important component will be what is the impact, the long-term impact it happens, take place on the jobs. Because if that uh, long-term impact happens on the employability of people, then it will impact the consumption pattern of the entire nation. So that is a bigger challenge. The RBI has already given monetary stimulus uh, to tide over that. I'm sure the government will come out with fiscal stimulus sooner than later. That probably will, but there will be a clear loss for discretionary spending industries because this 21 days will be clearly a loss of revenue. Okay. So, another question for you, Mr. Bhavla, from our audience. Uh, Mr. Omer is asking what sectors could be affecting the most post crisis? Which sectors would be the most where uh, investors would be ready to invest in? Investors so, would be better to answer those, but uh, I personally think you know, there will going to be a huge spurt of the moment we are done with this. And uh, I would see some of those sectors which have already been mentioned, some sectors which could open up in the first phase, second phase, third phase. Then I think we already had some of the panelists discuss that better. 
So those could be the sectors to be looking at. So any other panelists would like to add to it? With the Ayushman Bharat in the works and operating uh, any which is healthcare was anyway in focus. Now, given uh, the situation of a pandemic, I think probably it will get renewed focus. There were some states which had taken a lead in Ayushman Bharat and some states were slightly uh, lagging behind. But I think everybody realized the importance of having top class healthcare uh, right down to the district and the SE level. So, guess it will get much, much more focused than it was getting earlier. Uh, Mr. Mayara, you need to unmute. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I want to pick up on what uh, uh, Saikat uh, said. Uh, three, four years ago, um, uh, several of us, I mean, 100 people in the country, we got together and said, uh, let's look at how uh, more jobs and it could be created in the country and more stable jobs with better incomes and the small scale sector the informal sector is obviously the place one would look to how to uh, strengthen that sector and to make it uh, you know more uh, each enterprise in the sector to be uh, more sustainable so looking at that we said then what are the sectors in which india is going to need to have uh, more growth and uh, what he mentioned about uh, health care was very clearly there and we're not talking about big hospitals here you see that's the point okay we're talking about things being done locally and the different forms uh, in which uh, public uh, health has to be strengthened. There's local uh, um, um, Muhala clinics, for example, there are little apps which can help people to connect with uh, various things in, regarding their health and sanitation uh, and so on. And we projected that this sector could generate so many jobs and for local enterprises. The point is local enterprises, small enterprises. Another sector was the whole renewable sector, water management, yeah, local energy management, solar energy management, which is again, something that the world is going to need more of and India too. So small enterprises which are uh, growing in, in that sector, in the energy sector, second one. So if you start looking at the other way, the, the big things that India hasn't done well enough in so far, or the world hasn't done well enough in so far, those are opportunities and very interestingly, most of those sectors provide big places, uh, I, I mean, a big space for small enterprises, like even solar energy, the one I mentioned. So there is hope and we are going to need small enterprises to build the sort of economy that the world really needs to have. Okay, sure. So Mr. Pagla, the poll question that you had mentioned, uh, they had made that live and uh, right now 42% say yes. 37% say no, and 21% still can't say whether they would want the lockdown period to be further extended post April 14th. How many said yes? 42% mean... say yes, 37% uh, say no, and 21% say can't say. Okay, thank you. Uh, Punita, I would like to come here, uh, want to say sure, something. Sure, sure. Sib, uh, I think uh, as a regulator, I would not like to uh, throw much light on which sector one should invest and which sector one should not invest. Anyhow, uh, uh, you know, uh, today the market is up by 850 points. So I think uh, now people are moving towards optimism, it seems. Uh, as far as uh, sectors are concerned, as, uh, as of now, it seems that uh, if MCG is doing well, healthcare sector will be in the limelight. Uh, of course, you know, uh, now with the exodus of the people towards agriculture side, you know, where migrant laborers are going towards uh, their hometown, and I don't know when they are going to come back, I think a lot of focus will also be on the agriculture sector. Besides that, there will be a lot of innovations uh, that will keep on happening. Uh, whereby you will find that people will try to uh, bring a new and new innovation which require lesser uh, interaction, human interaction. So I think uh, you will see that people will start focusing on robotics and all those things, okay, where the interactions will be the minimal. So this type of new, new things.
this we will start uh, seeing happening and investment will keep on coming okay as of now we are importing 35% of various products from china you know a lot of focus will be that that our reliance on china will come down and we will start producing in house and what that i think uh, you know government should ensure that uh, there should be a, a ease of doing business keep on happening a lot of liquidity should be provided to them uh, moratorium period can be kept as uh, long as it can be and equity infusion should keep on taking place in those companies so i think uh, going forward i am seeing a lot of optimism i am seeing india uh, growing and uh, towards developing nation and uh, new things will happen of course i think india is uh, on the verge of becoming a very uh, big company and developed nation or what you can say developed nation so mr mayer i think you would like to add to it yes please uh... Uh, Punita, this is a time for uh, building our nation, and the SMEs uh, have a very critical role to help build the na nation. But we all have a very important responsibility as policymakers and people in the financial sector to help the SMEs at this time. They need help at this time, but they have a very critical role to play. And what is this? This comes out from what was just said about uh, you know technologies that are going to displace workers. They are developing, no question about it. I'm not an economist, but I've become a great economist in the last 10 years, grappling with economists on this question, that if uh, we are developing technologies that displace people, then how are people going to earn and where's the market going to be? Okay, so we have to have innovations in India particularly because we want to engage more people so that they can earn, so that there is a market. So, and in this, the small sector, the MSMEs have a great role to play. The MSMEs are, greater uses of people and lesser uses of capital than large enterprises are. How they treat people that they have, how they build their skills, how they respect their needs is going to shape this country, is going to shape this country. And we found in our surveys that we did in the uh, Planning Commission and later, that what is the prime difficulties that SMMEs, as MSMEs have uh, is finance. I mean, they need the oxygen most of all. None of them complained about the rigidity of labor laws as being a problem. Whereas big industries say, oh, we can't fire people easily, so let us fire a few more people so that we are attractive to investors and can grow. Unfortunately, that makes India's problems even worse. And so I come to the SME, MSMEs, what they do in engaging more people and treating them fairly and building their skills is building India. And so in growing your enterprises, please concentrate on the people that you engage on their growth and development along with yourself. That is really going to build uh, the strength of, well, India as a, as, as a nation. So I'm sorry to be preaching a piece of advice, but I've learned this through my life. That people are the only real asset that any organization has and the only asset in the organization that appreciates its own value, can appreciate its value everything else depreciates its value in time. So please let's build the people's strengths of, of your enterprises and the people's strength of our country. So, Mr. Mara, there's another question for you from the audience uh, by Mr. Sunil. He says, with respect to the infrastructure sector and MSME involved in the sector, especially government infrastructure, what will be the impact when a lot of government funds could have been diverted towards taking care of the present crisis? Will these projects be put on hold? I can't say. I mean, um, maybe Deepak is closer to that. Um, and many others um, even have to be even closer. But things are moving very fast. Things are moving very fast. But I would say this much, that in execution of anything now, in the execution, there's going to be a role for the last mile in anything. So you can give a lot of funds to a sector, but for what has to get done, a lot has to get done on the ground in any sector, like healthcare, like we mentioned. I'm saying same about infrastructure. Please, there's going to be a lot of growth for the MSMEs possible. And this is the time, therefore, for MSMEs not to feel, uh, oh, bichare hum hai, to get together and say, we can do it. We can do it. And make us part of this effort. And we can do it. For which, you've got to be building your own capabilities. That's the point I make now. Hmm? Please, I think there's a big opportunity if the funds go down from the top, in the last mile, who's going to be the users? Who are going to be the implementers? Is going to be MSMEs. Okay. Yeah. Shekhar, you would like to add to it? 
Uh, to the earlier question with uh, Mr. Thakur and Mr. Maria replied, just to share some statistics with you, developed economies, you look at UK, you look at Germany, you look at Singapore, the MSME contribution to GDP is to the extent of 50-55%. India, the contribution is 30-35%. So we have a long way to go. There are policies in place. Now, like for everything else in India, there has to be penal action for things to happen. Uh, there was a guideline which says that discoms need to buy renewable energy power to an extent. It was in limbo for a long time. And then the penal action regime came in, renewable energy certificates came in. And now, seven years ago, we were talking about grid parity. Today, we see solar is in some uh, Gujarat and a couple of other states has got below thermal in the tariff. Level. Similarly, we have a public procurement policy which says 25% has to be procured from uh, the MSME. Out of that, 5% is reserved for uh, socially backward SESP uh, enterprises. I don't think the PSU governments, you, all the balance sheets are available. You can go through them. You can get data from NSIC website. That procurement, nobody reaches to that 25% procurement, which is mandated by law that they need to take. All government agencies and PSUs need to take. So they came with a logic that, okay, Mera district mate is not available. I can't find it in my catchment area. So MSME ministry came out uh, and along with NSIC, we came out with a, a website called MSME Data Bank. You, have, you, you can register, this is for your audience also. You have to register free. You can get the Udyog Aadhaar number. Your okay. name product will go up on the MSME Data Bank. So any consumer who wants to procure your data can look at data wise, district wise, pin code wise, they can shortlist that, okay, this data is available. The other thing which happened is government launch for uh, all secretaries and the government department, GEM, government e-marketplace, where MSMEs can log in and sell their products online. Now, how this was supposed to work, this was supposed to work, what Mr. Maria said, is thinner. It was supposed to work that, okay, government will give an invoice, which is approved that, yes, I will pay. And they will go to the treads platform and they can immediately get the money. So your working capital for the very small guy is taken care of. Now, treads platform is not taking up. Today, there is a mandate that above 500 crore turnover, if I'm not wrong, the PSUs need to mandatorily list. So again, we need penal action for the policies also to act. So if you will force everybody, all the PSUs to go at by 25% from the MSME, we will reach the level of statistic with a developed economy, 50%, 45% MSME contribution in the GDP. I think with, with this, we would just like to uh, close the session with one parting note from each one of you. Thank you. Can I just take that one on? Sure. Listen, I've been hearing this for a while. There is absolutely no doubt that the backbone of the Indian economy is our MSM. And that is where our entire strength lies. Business post-COVID is going to be completely different from what it was before COVID. And the set of new opportunities which will open up, especially in India, will be most focused for the entire MSME community. And I must also say that internally, there is absolute focus to try and see how we can make that entire segment more robust and provide it all support. I personally think this is MSME in India is now going to be the next future growth, fastest growth point going forward. Really want to emphasize that even on my personal view. Mr. Mayra, one parting note from you for our audience. Underline what Deepak said once and twice. Two underlines. Thank you. That's it. He said it. Sure. Thank you. We are in a very interesting phase. This is. There is no comparable data post-World War II. So actually, 
it's a blessing in disguise that you don't have to we don't have to uh, siloize ourselves we can just go about do an, anything and everything that we have and we have two very big challenges save lives and then save our livelihood what has happened today will structurally change all our organizations have business continuity plan but those plans were based that tomorrow we will go back to office yes. or we will go to another location server in pune server in uh, nasik so we always start we will go back to the office it has never happened that hum office in india but we will never go back to office so i think the digital push will be ingrained in business continuity plan i think mr thakur mentioned localization of the supply chain and increasingly indian msmes will get so that already has started corporates have already started exploring localization of the supply chain what we need the government to do is brass tack uh, sort of uh, incentive uh, now there was in the ports there is lockdown of 14 days your containers will be released after 14 days the msmes are going to incur uh, demerge and interest cost this needs to be just simply waived off they are not in a position to pay salary these have to be waived off uh, canadian uh, canadian uh, pm has announced that uh, there is a certain category of enterprises 75% of the wages will be taken care of now we cannot allow our india's consumption pattern to get disturbed that will have long term effect the honorable finance minister came out with a very to the point uh, press release regarding the compliance issues we and that kind of to the point uh, press release happens only when you have enough feedback from the associations and the the, the people who are running the businesses we need people like mr bagla and other people to go and touch base with the industrial association the people whose businesses it is and on that feedback a very brass tack fiscal stimulus must come in sooner than later probably sure thanks uh, mr thakur uh, mr thakur you need to unmute Yeah, I think going forward there will be a lot of opportunity to almost all sectors. I am not singling out that any other sector is not going to do well. Existing sector will keep on uh, moving the way it is moving. Of course, there will be some sort of innovation that will keep on happening. The need of the hour will be that it will should be a joint effort by all the stakeholders to ensure that SME should keep on uh, moving smoothly, uh, not only from the government side, from all other stakeholders also. and the other smes whether they are into uh, you know local or in domestic market or international market they have to also ensure that the business keep on happening between them so that will be the need of the hour thanks abhishek final word from you yeah i think we as lenders need to remember that fundamentally businesses which were doing very well before covid have not suddenly become bad businesses it's an external stop or pause which has caused us to relook at uh, some of the financials and i think if we provide the right uh, stimulus both from a government as well as from a lenders perspective the msme sector we can really really go through the roof and help in uh, nation building and i think that's the view that we as lenders need to take and ensure that we follow the right guidelines and the right lending mechanisms to make that happen okay thanks So with this, uh, we would like to uh, conclude the panel. It was wonderful to have you all here, and thank you so much for your time. We wish to see you again in the near future, and hopefully offline and not in the confines of our houses. So stay healthy, stay safe, everyone, and let's fight the virus together. Thank you.